Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I am now um, starting to upload uh, answers to some P1 style papers. Um, as you know, there's only one up to now. This is now, we're now in May 2019. Up to now, there's only one P1 past paper, which was in January um, of this year. So um, I've started to go through the a specimen paper, I'm going to go through the sample assessment papers and I'm also going to go through some papers that I compiled myself from various sources which are of the same type of style of the new P1 paper. And this was a paper that I gave um, as a mock exam to my students. So I'm going to go through this paper um, and I'll start with the first question, question number one. Um, here we have a question about CERDs. It says, showing all your working, simplify uh, root 28 plus root 343. Okay, so here we have to be very careful not to lose marks um, by not showing sufficient working. These are the type of question where you could just type this in your calculator and the answer will come out okay as required okay so i'll show you how that will happen okay so it's actually a type of question where you could just type everything in your calculator like you could just put root 28 plus root 343 oops 343 and then you press equals and it gives you the answer okay and if you just write the answer down for this type of question you will get absolutely zero mark because they know they can they know that you can do this it's wonderful for you to be able to check your answer by using your calculator to make sure that you've done it correctly but this is not sufficient at all for you to gain any marks in this question all right so doing this will result in you losing all the marks of the question so it's very important for you to know how to do this, how to show your steps, how to show the examiner that you know what you're doing and you show the sufficient steps and use your calculator by all means to check your answer, to check to see you've got it correct. If you made a mistake, you can then go back and correct it. So that's what's really important here. Okay. So now you've got to take root 28 and root 343 and you've got to simplify it in the form a root 7. So let's start. You've got root 28 plus the square root of 343. All right. Now, what we need to do in these questions where you have these in said form is you need to split them up, these numbers, into two numbers where one of them is a perfect square, which you can then break down, and the other one is not a perfect square. And it's quite obvious in this question, if you look at the question. Okay, it says a root 7. So it's pretty obvious that you're going to be left with uh, a 7 as one of the factors for both of these. Okay, so it's not something that takes a lot of thought there, really, because you're going to be left with something root 7. So you know that 4 times 7 is 28. So root 28 can be, can be written as root 4 times root 7. Okay, and 343, well, it's going to be the root of something times the root of 7. Okay, so here you can just, if you're not sure, say, okay, let's see what 343 uh, divided by 7 gives us 49. And you say, all right, that's a perfect square, so it works out perfectly fine. So that's, that's going to give you 2 root 7, and that's going to give you 7 times root 7, and 2 root 7 plus 7 root 7 is 9 root 7. And there we have our answer. So this step here is vitally important that you show that you split it up into a product of two factors. One of them would be a seven and the other one would be the number that multiplies by the seven to give you the number that we started with. And the other number is always going to be a perfect square. So it breaks down. Okay. So it's really, really important that you show this step. Okay. Even if you go straight from here to here, this is also not sufficient because you could write root 28 in your calculator and get two root seven. And root 3, 4, 3, and you calculate and get 7 root 7. So this is really important for you to write down this step. Okay. A lot of students, they lost marks in the mock exams for not showing their steps properly. It's very important. Of course, the, the examiners know you are able to uh, do many of these things just straight from your calculator without understanding what to do. And they're not testing you on how well you can punch buttons during your calculator. 
Okay, so that's what it's important for you to show sufficient steps. Okay, part B says, hence or otherwise, show all of your working and simplify. Now, hence, whenever you see the word hence, it means what you've just done is relevant to answering this question. It will help you to, make, to answer this question. If it says hence or otherwise, then you have the option to try and do it in another way. Okay, but generally when it says hence, it means what you've just done is going to help you in your question. And that's why they want you to use what you've just done to answer the question. Okay, so that's what they're basically saying. So you use what you've just done to answer this question. And what you'll notice is the denominator of what we have to simplify into this form B plus C root 7 is exactly the same as the expression that we had to simplify. So you can simply say, here you can say that uh, root 28 plus root 343 is equal to, is it 9 root 7 was it? 9 root 7. So you could s just simply replace that in this, you say 9 plus 3 root 7 divided by 9 root 7. Okay, so this expression becomes that. All right, you just replace root 28 plus root 343 3 with 9 root 7. Now there's two ways we could proceed. Okay, now some students, they say, all right, let's multiply both bottom, top and bottom of this. Okay, basically what, what's happened here is this is not a, um, um, a denominator which is rational. Okay, this is a denominator which is irrational. So we have to rationalize the denominator in order for us to leave it in this form. Okay, so what we have to do is multiply both top and bottom by something that will cause the denominator to become rational. And if it's just one term like this, you normally just multiply it by um, the irrational part. So for example, 9 root 7, um, I would myself multiply this by root 7. And that way, you'll end up with 9 times 7. And the denominator will be rational. But what I do to the denominator, I must also do to the numerator and multiply the whole of the numerator by root 7. Some people multiplied it by 9 root 7, which is perfectly fine. It's just you're just making an extra factor for yourself and making more the numbers bigger for yourself when you're simplifying. There's no need to multiply it by 9 root 7 because, you know, if you multiply it by root 7, the denominator will become rational anyway. Okay, so it's fine. Doing this saves you a bit of um, hassle. That's all. So 9 times root 7 plus 3 times... Now, root 7 times root 7 gives you just 7. So that would be 3 times 7 over. And you'll have 9 times root 7 times root 7 is 7. Okay, so you end up with 9 root 7 plus 21 over, and you've got 9 times 7. Okay, um, I'm going to leave it as 9 times 7, to be honest, because we have to split it up into two separate fractions. So I can realize that what I can do here is I can write this as um, 9 root 7. In fact, I can take out yeah, 9 root 7 over 9 times 7 in which case the 9s will cancel out, plus 21 over 9 root 7, okay, uh, sorry, 9 times 7, not 9 root 7, it's 9 times 7, 21 over 9 times 7, in which case the 7 will cancel with the 21, giving you with 3, so we're left here with, um, that will be 1 over 7 root 7, 1 over 7 times root 7, and plus 3 over 9, which is 1 third. Okay, so to write it in the form they want, they want the, 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 the rational term first, so 1 third plus 1 seventh of root 7. And there we have the answer in the form required as two separate fractions. Okay, um, there's also another way we could have done it from this, from this step here. Okay, another way we could have done it from this step, as I saw some students do. They split it up into two, two fractions right from the beginning. So they said, all right, 9 over 9 root 7. And then they said, plus 3 root 7 over 9 root 7. Okay, and that gives you, they cancel out, you get 1 over root 7. Okay, 1 over root 7. And the th the these cancel out gives you 1 and 3 and the root 7 cancel out gives you 1 plus 1 third and then they rationalize this part of it so 1 over root 7 to rationalize it you have 1 over root 7 times root 7 
and you multiply the top by root 7 as well and you got your plus thir one third which gives you with one third and you're left with root 7 over 7 which is one seventh times root 7 same answer okay so that's the other way of doing it okay both of them are perfectly fine to give you your answer but what you can't do is just see if you just type this in your calculator I'll show you again typing this in your calculator if you make a fraction and you put 9 plus 3 times root 7 divided by root 28 okay plus root 343 you just type that in your calculator it basically gives you your answer as one fraction you can just split it up okay Okay, so it's, and again, as I said, it's a good way for you to check your answer, all right? But don't just write the answer down. You'll get zero marks. So don't just write a whole load of nonsense down and then write the answer down thinking that you can trick the examiner. You have to show your steps clearly. So either you split it up into two, you, you write it as um, the way the, the denominator, as we found earlier, simplified, and then split it into two fractions like you did up here, or you rationalize the denominator by multiplying both top and bottom by root 7. Okay, so there we have question number 1. So it's really important. A lot of students lost marks on this question even though they knew what to do by just being either lazy, okay, by just writing down, I mean even in their head they said, oh that's two root, that's going to be 2 root 7. Okay, they write 2 roots. No, you have to make the examiner know that you did not just type it in your calculator. And that's why it says showing all of your working. Right, so it's very, very important in these type of questions that you don't just throw away marks, okay?